Beloved ones, if you are here for the first time, I have not known anything about this work. All mankind have sought throughout the centuries to find their source from which comes their light. The ascended masters have brought forth this chart that gives you the correct eye picture of your connection with your own individualized God presence. The mighty I am that is the source of all life, energy, intelligence, and activity of every human being that's embodied in the physical world. Therefore, if you will understand and see how, instead of the old idea, how can I make my permanent contact with God, the truth is you never were disconnected. You never would be disconnected from the presence of life and have a physical body. Therefore, as you observe this and the explanation, you will see why the ascended masters are the authority and why you can, if you choose to study and apply this great law, release a greater power of intelligence and energy than you have yet experienced in your life. The lower figure in the chart represents your human or flesh body. The upper figure, the mighty I am present, the individualized presence of God, and the ray of light and energy coming from the heart of the presence through the top of your head, anchoring within your physical heart, is the life, the light, the substance, the intelligence, the energy, and the activity by which your human form exists and moves about. Without that ray of light and energy, there would be no human forms here. There would be nothing to supply life or sustain it. And the need of mankind today is to have a sustaining power in their activities, and there is no sustaining power without the knowledge of this mighty I am present, the source of all life. Therefore, between your flesh body and your mighty I am present is your higher mental body, a form just as tangible in its own octave as your flesh body is here. It is your discriminating selective intelligence, knows the perfection which the presence is, and knows the imperfection with which you have surrounded your physical body. And that is the provision which the mighty I am presence has made, the individualized presence of God, to give you assistance in the human octave. Because the mighty I am presence as it stands with the unascended being knows nothing about your difficulties down here. But your higher mental body does, knows both conditions, knows the perfection of which the presence is, and knows the imperfection you have drawn about you, but will not accept it into its world. Therefore, the only imperfection that exists is in the human octave, from the surface of the earth to approximately 7,000 feet. Therefore, beloved one, when you have before you this clear, definite eye picture of your reality, you will see and know how different is everything in life than you had anticipated before. When your attention goes from your heart and brain activity to the present, and that ray of light and energy intensifies and expands, the radiance is thrown up, which you see there about the figure, and you can call the mighty I am presence to make that an invincible tube of light about you. And so long as you keep harmonious within that tube of light, that tube of light will intensify in its invincible protection for you every day that you call for the energy and power of the present to do so. You can make it an absolutely invincible protection, and you can move in the world untouched by the human discord about you. Mrs. Ballard and I do this, and that's the reason why we're untouched by the visas that's projected at us in this work. Therefore, you see within that tube of light, mighty fire consuming flame, the only means life has provided for mankind by which they may have dissolved and consumed the discord and accumulation and creation of the century. For you have lived hundreds and thousands of embodiments similar to these, whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter, you just did. And therefore, there must be provided some means by which mankind can have that dissolved and consumed. The human cannot do these things. The human cannot uh, establish that tube of light. Neither can it set into action the fire consuming flame. But their call to the mighty I am presence will enable the mighty I am presence to establish that tube of light about them of invincible protection and the fire consuming flame within to pass it and rush it through their body like a blowtorch. Uh, 
under their feet if they're standing, under the chair if they're sitting down, or on the bed if they're lying down, or over the floor of their home or office. Mankind once understood that they can cleanse and purify their activities in their homes and offices in a manner that's perfectly astounding until you become familiar with it. And that is how we keep our activity cleansed and purified from all vicious forces. Therefore, we know, and we're proving the law every hour of the day. Therefore, as most of you know, in the cities where all kinds of vicious vortexes are focused upon us or tried to, they have no power, absolutely. And therefore, we go serenely along doing our work, pouring out our love and blessings upon all mankind, and the people that are vicious just sweep it back, that's all. Now then, when you see the power of light, all forces of light that you deal with, all forces of light is the power of light, self-luminous intelligence and substance. And it's more than a principle. It is a substance. And all light, you are dealing with substance which is vibration and substance and vibrations tested in action. Therefore, when you see there before you your source that rests above every human being, and you can understand how in that great search for tender rays and having forgotten that presence, that you have not had but a fragmentary part of that energy flowing into your body. And now observe, all kinds of teaching almost have said that God was within, that Christ was within, the Christ within. Oh, that's very true. But how much of it? If all of God or Christ within was there within the physical body, the body would be perfect. And we wouldn't be here. Dear ones, you are only using less than 10% of the great God presence which you can call forth into action. And therefore, God is within, but the greater part of God is above you in the visual eyes, whose mighty intelligence gives you life and energy and activity to the physical body. And once you understand that, and we are daily and hourly proving that in drawing forth greater and greater perfection and power and energy and protection, and therefore, we are living proof of this great law which St. Germain brought forth. Therefore, you see the radiance around the upper figure. That's the accumulation of good which you have created during the centuries and the thousands of embodiments which you lived. Now then, these two activities refer to your activity in the outer world. Now let us take up the goal of mankind. When your attention goes from your heart and brain activity to the presence of that ray of light and energy intensifies and expands, whether you know it or not, in every cell of your body is a point of light which is a light pattern upon which your physical structure is held. And when your attention is held to the presence and that ray of light and energy intensifies and expands, at the base of your brain is the distributing point where the threads of light go to the cells of the body. And when your attention is held there long enough and the expansion of the points of light within the cells of your body dissolves the density with which you have closed those points of light by discord in your feelings. That's the only reason the body is dense as it is today, by discord registered in the feelings. And therefore, when you have held your attention long enough upon the presence and earnest enough, and that density is enough dissolved, the earth will lose its attraction for the human form, and the purified physical body ascends into the higher mental body, where the transformation from the human into the divine takes place, and all appearance of age will leave the form, the clothing dissolved into that of the higher octave, when a great ray of dazzling white light descends from the presence, and the purified physical body absorbed into the higher mental body ascends into the mighty ion presence when the individual becomes the ascended being, just as Jesus, the great man, and the others are. I have witnessed that the ascension three times in America since 29 and know exactly what I'm talking about. Therefore, dear ones, if you haven't known of it, don't say it isn't true, because I saw it. And therefore, when you understand that all the forces mankind are using of any consequence are invisible, this presence to most people is invisible, but it's very tangible. So is the higher metabolic. Therefore, all the forces that come into action 
act through your feeling world before it finds outer expression. Therefore, as you understand that and realize, as you observe this chart, and there isn't anything on the face of the earth more important today than this chart to mankind, because it gives you the eye picture and brings the three faculties that you are using every moment of your life into balanced activity, which is your attention, your vision, your physical sight, and your power of qualification, which is an activity within the ceiling. When your attention is upon that presence, upon that track, all those faculties are acting in absolute balanced, all-powerful activity. Therefore, you see and understand how the attention, your vision, has been looking out upon the outer world of appearance and accepting the limitations and imperfections that's there, causing it to come again and act in your world. Now then, we reverse all that and we say to the appearance world, you have no power, get out. Mighty I am, brethren, take command of this mind and body, but choose your perfection and hold your dominion there. And it proceeds through it. Therefore, mankind is no longer subject to the mistakes and conditions which they have accumulated, although they are at fault in having done so. But if you will honestly and earnestly and sincerely call on the law of forgiveness for all mistakes, then as you call the mighty I am, brethren, into action, you have fulfilled the law and can bring forth at your call mighty perfection, and first will come the great peace and rest and harmony in your feelings, and the happiness and the courage and strength. And then as you gain in that confidence in your presence will come forth that mighty invincible power of light as you call it forth into action and go out into your world that harmonizes and produces perfection and brings about the successful achievement of mankind. And there's not a person sitting in this room that would take and understand that and apply it with honest, earnest sincerity and could not focus their attention upon any given objective that was constructive and win success if they'll hold their attention upon it. Dear people, when your attention is upon a thing, your life is feeding into it. And behold, if your attention is upon destructive, limiting things, you will experience that back because it comes back on your life stream because your attention connected you with it. And if you want perfection, you've got to put your attention where it is. And the only place it exists is to the mighty I am present and the ascended master of case. Now remember, there's nothing psychic or spiritualistic about this work. Get that. And the ascended master is not a disembodied spirit. The ascended master is far beyond the disembodied spirit as light is beyond darkness. They have purified the physical body and ascended with it. Therefore, they're holy, perfect beings. Nothing whatsoever to do with disembodied spirit. And I want you to understand that. A lot of people have accused this work of being psychic. It's false, absolutely. It has anything to do with psychic work. Therefore, it is the light of life, the power of life, the light of God, set into action by consciously calling it forth by conscious application. Therefore, beloved people, you have before you the key of life, the power of life, which you can call into action. And if human minds and intellects are too stubborn to believe and too stubborn to investigate and apply that law and try it out, well, then they can stay on their chain. That's their party. But the law of life is before you. And it's honest and sincere. So are we. And therefore, if you want the law, the application, it is there before you for your blessing and can't produce anything else. Now, I want to say to you that the violet-consuming flame shown there cannot produce harm and is the only means by which you can cleanse and purify your accumulation of the senses and have dissolved and consumed forever. Now then, when you call your presence, when you give attention to your presence and call it into action, whatever fractional part of achievement is achieved by that becomes a permanent thing. 
you never have to redo what you do through the eye of them. Therefore, if you will really give attention and want to be free, the way is open. Accept it or reject it as you like. If you accept it, your freedom is assured. If you reject it, you will remain in your chains of limitation. Dear people, every one of you have lived thousands, hundreds, and thousands of embodiments similar to these. Every time accumulating more or less discord. Now, whatever discord you have accumulated from the beginning, since you left the great light, belongs to you. And you can't run away from it. Therefore, it belongs in your world. Now then, for the first time in a very long period, the understanding of the use of the violet consuming flame has been brought by St. Germain into the outer world. It's the only means that life has provided by which you can have consumed for you every particle of that discord you've gone about you through the centuries. Now understand this, dear people, because this is absolutely the law of life and this is the truth. There is no other means that will dissolve that for you but to call the presence into action to set that fire consuming flame into action under your feet if you're standing, under your chair, if you're sitting down, under your bed if you're lying down or over the floor of your home or your office. Then the presence does that and will dissolve and keep dissolved if you call it to be sustained every particle of discordant accumulation. Now, all this is quality about you and in your feeling world. And as that is consumed, you will find yourself absolutely free from the pressure of your own creation. And remember, St. Germain has said repeatedly ten times the pressure of the atmosphere of Earth. Think of it. No wonder people are bowed down like that. I'm telling you. Therefore, beloved people, when you are released now, St. Germain asked me in the beginning of those experiences of unread message to call the presence to use the bark and swimming flame, and in six weeks I felt as though tongues were lifted off this body. Actually, and I've been able to think and feel with a clearness sense it was incredible before. And of course it gets clearer all the time. But dear ones, Unless you understand and will do these things, you can't be free. This is not our imagination. I have seen this with St. Germain. Every particle of this information I give you, both from the inner and outer standpoint, I know exactly the law that's acting and what you must do to free yourself. Therefore, if you will do this, call the presence to establish that tube of light about you. It's invisible protection. And notice, when we were in Sananda's home in India, I'd heard of this before, but I never saw it. And uh, it's quite a common thing in India for the unascended masters to draw that tube of light about them so powerful that a bullet from an elephant rifle will not penetrate it. Uh, standing off, oh, far as near the corner of that box over there. And the master will stand there and they shoot at him direct. And when the bullet strikes that radiance of the tube of light around him, it flattens and falls to the earth. Hundreds of people have seen it. Why, in our second New York class, a soldier boy came in the class who had been overseas with the fleet over there and he saw that thing. And when I described it, he said, well, if nothing else would convince me that this was the truth, he said, I saw that done. And he said, I know you're telling the truth. Therefore, beloved ones, <laughs> for the instructions, Fernando showed us the same thing when we were there, Bob Nix, Dar and Pearl Knight. Therefore, these things are reality, dear ones. Do you think I'd waste my time in talking about these things to if it wasn't true? Good heavens, what would be the reason for it? There wouldn't be any. And therefore, I want to these things because it's vital. And it's far more vital 
than the food when you get hungry. Don't forget that. You could go a good while without eating. Maybe you don't think so. I went a long while on one sandwich day, hamburgers at that. A <laughs> one <laughs> now, dear ones, let us take up that which is the goal of mankind. Now, dear ones, if you are here for the first time, dear people, it doesn't make a bit of difference to me whether you accept or reject. Anyhow, I'm telling you that I'm telling you the truth. You can do the box. I have observed three ascensions in America since 29. And through this body was given the assistance to David Lloyd, who made the ascension on the side of Mount Shasta. Now you can believe it or not. It took place. Therefore, I know the truth of every word I tell you. And if there's anybody in this world, of course there are some, as you know, that are so depraved that they think I would tell an untruth about this work. Well, that's their hard luck. I would no more tell an untruth about the most sacred thing in the universe than I'd cut off my arms and legs. Not a bit. <laughs> Mr. Rayborn, after his first uh, visit to the cave of symbols, when he came there for the further work, the light each time became more and more vivid through the flesh of his body and with his, through his clothing, from his heart, the radiance was visible to anybody's physical sight. Therefore, as they just before his ascension, from his feet to his head, the light shone through his face just like the light through an alabaster vase. Now, that is why, when you use that statement, Mighty I'm present to expand light within every cell of my body, I tell you, dear people, you have no idea what a powerful, magnificent thing that is. And don't you know what it would do if every moment during the day you would remind yourself when your mind wasn't otherwise occupied to just silently, my dear, I am present to expand the light within every cell of my body. Why, think what it would do. But you see, yet mankind doesn't improve all the moments when they could do many of these things that would bring about such powerful, speedy results. But they're coming to it. They'll soon get where they'll keep themselves constantly reminded of these little, oh, they seem little things, but my dear people, they are majestic and powerful. And that's why. Now, when the light in the cells of your body has expanded enough, the density with which you have clothed by discard will be dissolved to the extent that the earth will lose its attraction for the purified physical body. And the purified physical body naturally is drawn to the present because all discord and earthly pressure is taken off. And it ascends into and is absorbed into the higher metal body where the transformation from the human into the divine takes place and all Parents of age will leave the form, the clothing dissolves into that of the higher octave, when the great ray of dazzling white light descends from the present, and the purified physical body of the into the higher mental body ascends into the electronic body of the mighty I am present, when the individual becomes the ascended being as Jesus and Saint Mary and the others are. 
Now, that's the practical process that every being that has ever made dissension goes through. I have witnessed it three times, every detail, and through this body was assistance given David Lloyd. Now, now, just get this for a few months. When I used to talk about this, you'd see him get up and go out all around through the audience. So just hold his hands a while. I can't go in just very briefly to call your attention to this. But dear people, right through this body right here was given that assistance. And when I met him, went out to meet St. Germain, you've read it in the book, and he came instead. And when I wanted to offer him a drink of water, first time precipitation ever occurred in my hand, and I reached for the cup, and instead came in my hand this crystal cup. My astonishment was far greater than his. And as we stood there watching it, he was just transfixed. It filled with this marvelous liquid. And as soon as he saw that was filled, he seized it like that with both hands and drank it just as fast as he could. I had not had the explanation from him yet what had occurred is, is given there in the book. And then he became very calm and quiet and then related to me what had been told him by the master in India. In all those years of search, just think of it. The very fragmentary information which was given him, and yet he followed that out. The man in India had told him that on a great mountain in North America, he'd find a man with a crystal cup, and when he had found him, he would find the man who could assist him through the ascension. That was the information. And when he came there and saw me, and I thought it was somebody on a hike, like to meet people, and he, of course, knew far more about it than I did. And when this, he saw this in my hand, then he knew his search was finished. Now, notice, this is the point I want to get to you. I'm not concerned whether you believe it or not. But this is the point. I do not consider that I had anything whatsoever to do about it, intellectually or physically. When he said to me, uh, describe this, and I said to him, well, what am I supposed to do? I had many more ideas than you have. And mark these words. He said, ask the God in you who does know. And he said that with such power that it was just like I was stiffen and my whole human self just receded out of the way and the light from my presence came down as far as my heart and my arms, these arms, my head and chest and arms were such a blazing light you couldn't look into it at first. And as my hands went out and took his in a few moments, his feet left the earth. And as far as my hands would reach, and then his hands let go, and he continued until his feet was perhaps, uh, oh, 18, 20 feet above my head. And he stood there in the atmosphere when this transformation that I have described to you took place. And then this great dazzling ray of white light descended from the present. Now, mark you, I didn't see the present. I only saw the ray of light. And he disappeared within it. But before he disappeared within that ray of light, he spoke those words recorded there to me. And it was a long time to me I never heard from him. And I wondered sometimes why. Well, it is only comparatively recent that he explained. And he said, my love and gratitude 
to you was so great, I did not dare come near you for a time. And dear one, since he is constantly ministering in these classes, David Lloyd was an Englishman. He and his father, as he is a lad, was in South Africa where his father was killed. And for the sake of expression, I would say perhaps I have no such friend in the universe as he is.